Greetings and salutations, everyone. I hope everyone is doing well today. Today I've got a very informative and terrifying upload to share with you guys. I also have a couple of announcements. Uh, tomorrow, I will more than likely have the gentleman from New Jersey giving an interview. And Friday, with everything going well with Luke and his health, I should have him on. So... That is one announcement. Second is for all of the intelligent toolboxes who want to share or uh, assume they know why the ads are blowing up in my upload, saying that I'm getting rich, saying this, saying that. There's a link in the description, um, and it's an explanation of why the ads have blown up in everybody's uploads, not just mine. So for those guys who love to just talk trash, watch the video. Or for those guys who think they're so intelligent and full of information and want to share it, or actually they probably just want to spew because they're bored sitting in their mom's basement looking at Playboys from 1972. Anyway, enough of that. Let's get on with today's upload. As you know, I rely on my Patreon, my PayPal, and my merch to help this channel to continue to grow and go. All those links are in the description below. I also have a second channel for creepypasta fanfiction and scary voice acting. Stories that, well, they don't fit on this channel. Now, if that's anything that you're into, follow that link and give those stories a listen. You may just like what you hear. Now I've taken enough of your time. Let's get on with today's upload. Shall we? Today's first encounter. I live in a small Missouri town, and it's super common for teenagers here to drive around in this particular set of woods, referring to the Boogie Woods. There are quite a few tales surrounding it, most of which are about a cemetery or a plantation house in the center of those woods. Or even the church, where they'd hold KKK meetings underneath the church. There's a gap around four feet tall that they would sit in. It's not uncommon to get spooked out there at night, which is how it got its name. There even used to be a sign at the entrance with the O's in boogie shaped like eyes. I guess that's enough explanation for you guys to get in the mood of these woods. Now, I don't really scare easy when it comes to things like that, especially around my friends. I felt comfortable at night. We weren't worried about anything bad happening. We had been driving these gravel roads since we learned how to drive. We rounded the first big corner and saw a man with a mask on holding a knife and a cigarette. I'll admit it was kind of creepy, but it was probably some guy on meth, as that's pretty common in my area. We rounded the next curve and driving past a cornfield, which was only about two feet high at this point in season. That's when we saw it. We all saw it. So I knew I wasn't just crazy. It was about six feet tall and built like an average buck, very muscular, with an enormous set of antlers. Something my brother or my grandfather would take pride in shooting. But it wasn't normal, it was on its hind legs, and not in a way that it sensed danger. It was just walking around on those legs. It looked pretty normal except for the face. I know it sounds like a load of BS that any teenager would make up if they got scared in the haunted woods, but like I said, we had driven these woods for years. We weren't scared of them. It just seemed so angry, and it ran away as soon as we saw it, as if it didn't want to be seen. I've never been frightened in those woods as I was that day. Today's second part of the upload, I'm going to share a little information about the Ozark Howler, and then we're going to get into a rather terrifying encounter. The Ozark Howler, also known as the Ozark Black Howler, 
the devil cat, etc., is a legendary cryptid that is said to live in the forests of the Ozark Mountains in Arkansas. It has many sightings in the area, along with some from other areas, such as Missouri, Oklahoma, and Texas. The creature shares its size and body shape with that of a large bear, and is covered in shaggy gray-black hair. The howlers claim to have sturdy, large legs, along with piercing red eyes, two protruding horns, and a large tail. While all of that is enough to describe how dangerous it is, its most frightening part is probably the sound it makes, which is like a combination of a wolf's howl and a laugh of a hyena, but much louder. Another thing to be noted is the Ozark Howler has only been spotted alone and always full-grown, as it's assumed that it is a single creature who exists in solidarity. On the more mythical spectrum, the Ozark Howler has been described as both an omen of death and a shape-shifting creature. In the case of it being an omen of death, many inhabitants of the Ozark have claimed that anyone who hears the howl will die shortly thereafter. While this is much like some other cryptids from across the world, it has to be added that the Ozark Howler has never killed anyone. Now, while some reports claim that it has scared or carried humans, it has never been known to attack anyone with the intent to kill. Now, as for the idea of it being a shapeshifter, this is also a feature more well known by the people in the Ozarks, and it claims that the Ozark Howler can shift into different animals. To be very honest, this theory has probably arisen due to the fake sightings or other animals which have been merged into being the Ozark Howler. Due to this, people probably added that it can shapeshift. Thus, other animals like hyenas or cougars must have been the Ozark Howler. There is also little to no indication of any reports or actual claims pointing this to be a shapeshifting creature. The Howler is a decently old legend, and the oldest tale of it is from the early 1800s when a man named Daniel Boone encountered the beast. According to most reaccounts of this tale, Boone had fired his gun at the beast and hit it as well, but the bullet may have hit its mark. There's not much further info on this encounter, so it's assumed that the Howler escaped after being shot. A more recent sighting, December 2015, 40-29 News, Arkansas Television Station, reported having received images of the Ozark Howler. The Arkansas Game and Fish Commission was contacted to confirm, but no previous sightings had been recorded, and thus this sighting was claimed to be a hoax. Later on, it was discovered that Arkansas Game and Fish Commission had received a reported sighting of the beast during the fall of 2014. A recording emergency 911 call received by them from a motorist claimed that he nearly collided with a large, unidentified animal. The commission supposedly sent armed state wildlife officials to capture the bear-sized gray, fast-running animal, but they didn't find anything. While it may not have been known to kill, along with normal sightings of the howler, there are also some reports of it attacking areas and groups of people with a supposed terror inflicting purpose in mind. The Ozark Howler is especially known for its tendency to attack churches. One such attack is from the Cumberland Presbyterian Church in Russellsville, Arkansas, which displayed a prominent image of the Howler behind a stained glass window as sort of support its existence. Sometime in the early 20th century, a new preacher came to the church and removed the image due to it being diabolical. Shortly after it was removed, the church had a large fire and burned completely to ashes, which people claimed was the wrath of the Ozark Howler due to that photo being removed. Over the years, many theories have popped up as to what the creature may be, but Many of these are quite baseless, and without any backing at all. The most prominent theory 
and one that is present in most cryptids is that it is a case of mistaken identity. It's assumed that the howler is mistaken for a big cat like a cougar. Now, while the Ozark Mountains are not known to have a breeding population of cougars, officials have claimed there is a high possibility of individual big cats being in the forested area. This is because many people held them as pets at a time after which they were set loose, leading to a possible small group of such animals. Along with a big cat, other animals like bears could also be mistaken for the Ozark Howler, which would explain where the shape-shifting idea came from. While it all does fit well, this theory wouldn't be able to explain the red eyes, gray fur, and the size of the howler, because other than bears, most animals in that area don't grow so large. Could it be a mystical creature? According to this theory, the Ozark Howler is not just a normal cryptid, but must possess some sort of mystical, magical powers as well. This theory is supported due to the claims that the Ozark Howler is able to shapeshift as well as being an omen of death. If these two things are actually true, only some sort of magical power would be able to explain it, which gives this theory a premise. The only problem with this theory is that it is based on the existence of magical creatures and magic itself, which is something that has been debated. Could it be some sort of mutation? Now, this theory is slightly based off of the first of mistaken identity, but takes it in a bit of different path. The theory claims that the howler is originally a bear or a large cat, which underwent some sort of freak of nature or induced mutation, which caused it to change physically. And maybe its size. For a bear to look like a howler, it would only need to grow slightly, get gray hair and a pair of red eyes, which doesn't seem like a crazy mutation. While this theory does explain the sighting, and is somewhat plausible. It doesn't explain how the Ozark Howler has been seen for 200 plus years, as even a mutation cannot have such a long lifespan. While the Ozark Howler is less known cryptid compared to others from America, such as the Bigfoot, the Dogman, and the Goatman, it is just as scary and interesting and seems to be more animal-like and possible to exist. Just a little background info for those who are not familiar with it. I figured I'd share that and then share this encounter. I'm from Arkansas, and hiking is a huge passion of mine. Hobby doesn't quite cover it. I'd say it's more of a lifestyle. The Ozark mountain range is like a whole different world. It's so undisturbed and peaceful. I spent many, many days and nights exploring every inch of these woods and have yet to even cover a significant amount. That being said, I am aware that there are pretty unexplainable things in these woods. When you get deep into the woods is when you start hearing things and seeing things that you can't explain to others without sounding like a loon. Luckily, everything I've experienced was also experienced by another avid hiker such as myself. We spent many days and many nights hiking around those woods. The days turned into nights when we heard this unexplainable cry from an animal that I have never heard before. Let me add that while I do not necessarily fear for my life in the wilds, as I'm very vibey with animals, as well as respect nature to its fullest. What I heard and saw out there has left me boggled. The first night my friend and I heard it, we were speechless. Literally, I ended up getting on the good old interwebs and doing some research regarding the noise of what we heard. Come to find out, the locals call this thing the Ozark Howler, Wampus Cat, amongst some other things. I've done countless research since getting a taste for this so-called Ozark Howler, but nothing has yet quenched my thirst. 
in that sense. I still feel like there's more out there to know. I just have to cut in on the story. I apologize, but isn't that amazing that when anybody has an encounter, they are fueled or they are just stay away from it, but the majority are just fueled to learn more. <laughs> just strange to me. The first time it ever truly intrigued me, I was in Jasper, Arkansas, staying in a very old cabin and happened to walk outside around 2.30 in the morning to grab something out of my SUV. What I heard had its own solo and proceeded to set off every single coyote in what felt like a three-mile radius. Also, since we were here in a holler, nestled into the mountains right outside of Jasper, I'll have to say it was only a mile radius totally. Life is different in the hills and it demands utmost respect. So anyways, this thing sounded off all the coyote and just in the same instant that they were going off yipping and yapping and such, all the coyote stopped at once, leaving this thing to do its own solo again. It was a mixture of yipping, bugling, well, human scream, wolf howl, and finished off with a whoop, 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 like the monkeys you may hear at the zoo. Crazy combination, right? Then, complete and total silence. It was moving fast as well, like the noise would start at one place and would be somewhere else in an instant. Since that day, we had set to find this creature. This was during the summertime and carried into early fall, and I can only say that I think I've seen it once. We noticed we'd hear it typically after midnight, but it wouldn't be in the same area. It covered a vast area, like a normal mountain lion would do. Their territory spreads far and wide. It never once sounded like a mountain lion, though. Never. I once saw eyes so yellow and so intense staring at me, not Wavering in the slightest, it was across the Buffalo River from me as my friend and I set out rather late to find a spot to pitch our tent for the evening. This was one of those nights that we weren't actually seeking out the howler, but something tells me we found it. My friend wouldn't even look in the direction of the yellow reflective eyes that stared down at us from across the river. My flashlight was going out, and yet the eyes still happened to glow across the river at a certain angle. The thing never moved, yet held its defensive position. I've read the howler has red eyes in some stories, and others I read it has glowing yellow. I turned my light off to see if I could use the moonlight to see a silhouette of the creature. Night vision is the best vision to use, in my opinion, lol. It looked partially like a bear, partially like a cat to me. It never moved once. We quickly set out from there. That's the only time I've ever actually seen the creature, I think, is the Ozark Howler. I have heard it countless times after that. Not since that winter has started, though, which is odd to me. But I did read that they do hibernate. Today's third part of the upload. February 8th, 2016, Michigan, a heavy winter storm was hitting the area with some nasty weather. I was up early to get a jump on snow shoveling as the driveway was accessible for the propane delivery guy later that morning. As I was about halfway down the driveway, I heard a loud splash in the creek to the south about 25 yards away. Thinking it was a deer or two, I had jumped. I stopped shoveling and scanned the creek and woodline for any movement. As I scanned the creek, I came to the woodline and saw a pair of yellowish amber eyes about seven and a half to eight feet, tall, standing right next to a huge oak tree. It took off with a super burst of speed and went west. It then leapt into the air, and all I heard for the next few seconds was the treetops clanking against each other. It was like it was riding the treetops. 
I stood there for the next few minutes, questioning my sanity. For six to seven seconds, I saw this creature that stood seven and a half to eight feet tall, standing on two legs and looked like a dog's hind legs, a big wolf-like head with a snout and ears that resembled a German shepherd, and those ambered, yellowed eyes. My second sighting came in March. I had decided to walk up the creek to a clear brush. I was carrying a firearm with me on these occasions. I had gotten about 450 yards up the creek that flows through an entire acreage of the property. It was strange to me how completely quiet, or as to say dead, the woods were. I always jump something up, whether it's a deer or a turkey or a duck that are always out there. I didn't even hear any birds, which is very strange. I rounded the bend in the creek when up ahead about 55 yards is what looked like a back of a black bear that was digging into the bank of the creek. As I was setting my firearm down on one of those little islands in the creek, I snapped a branch and it stopped completely what it was doing. I froze and watched as this thing stood up on two legs. It started slowly turning around towards me. It stood eight feet tall and had a huge wolf head, snout and ears of a dog, and black fur. In my first encounter, the creature's fur was gray in color with some white. This one was all black. It kept glancing over the east and back towards me. It had not yet seen me. It puts its snout into the air and looked like it was sniffing the wind. I'm completely freaked out at this point and reached to pick up my firearm to get out of the area quickly when there was a splash up the creek. I looked up and now this thing's on all fours. It stood easily five, five and a half feet tall. At this point, I didn't want to run out of fear that it would give chase. So I stayed frozen. It looked at me and snarled, and I thought it was sizing me up, and then all of a sudden, it looks to the east, back at me, and took two giant leaps toward the east, and onto the bank of the creek. That's about 25 feet in distance. It then jumps towards the treetops and disappears in the east. I stood there in total disbelief. I got home and my mind was just racing, so I decided to confide in my father about what I had seen. He looked at me as if I was an alien, said I was crazy and I should get my head examined. I know what I saw. The next encounter was in May. My dad and I had had a fire down by the creek and we were getting low in wood. When he asked if I'd go get some more wood, for the fire behind the pole barn. I hesitated a little bit. I was afraid of those woods, which is something I thought I'd never say. After 10 minutes, I started to make my way towards the pole barn. It's just about dark, and I keep hearing rustling and this low growl from the dogs. And I reach the back of the barn. I light a cigarette and look out into the woods, which is Ten yards away, again the woods have gone completely quiet. It is eerie. Then there's a sound like a zipper being zipped. It was about 30 yards to the south. I waited for a minute and decided to look out to where I had heard the sound. As I glanced onto my right, I saw something move. It's just about completely dark, and there's this stench in the air that's absolutely putrid. It smelled like rotten guts and piss. I figured it was a rotten carcass of an animal. And then, as I was shining my flashlight, a deep guttural growl, like a raccoon would make, came from the area. I then heard the rustling sound again, so I shone the flashlight over towards the sound and I saw eyes about five and a half feet off the ground. The eyes were red in color and very shiny. It really didn't freak me out, as... A lot of critters have red eyes when exposed to light. Then this thing stood up on two feet. This thing was eight, eight and a half feet. It growled and it literally turned around and walked away towards the south. I thought I really crapped myself. I came back home and my dad asked where was the wood. 
I said I didn't feel well and I was going to bed. I went out the next day to look around the area and I heard a noise. I found only deer skin. The rest of the deer was gone, including the head. Also, two neighbors of mine have heard very eerie howls coming from my family's woods, saying they only come out around dusk. They've been in the area for 50 years and said they never heard that sound or anything like it. Also, my friend's cat was trapped 60 feet up in the tree for three days during a storm. It took tree cutting experts and a bucket to get it down. The rescuers said the cat was hissing and being uncooperative and was shaking violently. I also set apples out for deer every week and noticed the other day that all the apples were gone and a rock was in every place where there was an apple. I have found some tracks that look like huge wolves. There used to be deer around here all the time. Had a herd of 50 or 60. Now you're lucky if you see one or two. It's like they disappeared. It's been really strange around here for the past couple of years, and I don't know what to think about it. In all three of my encounters, the thing I saw reminded me of a werewolf. I no longer go near the woods. I was told by family members that a lot of the wood acreage is Indian burial grounds. What a set of encounters that guy's had, huh? Um, I really think the apple situation was not a dog man. I think that was a Sasquatch. Uh, leaving the rocks behind to kind of mark his territory for the dog man. Um, Bo has shined the light that they do live in the area of each other, uh, where Bo is from in Tennessee at least, I'm not sure in Michigan, but quite possibly they do. Um, Definitely a terrifying set of encounters. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed today's upload as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you. Uh, very excited for the way the channel is going and the future of the channel. So, thanks guys. I truly appreciate it. And with that, I'm getting very tired. I want to bid you guys a farewell.